Hey, hey, what's happening, guys? I've got a neat little project for us today. Before we get started, I want to make an announcement this afternoon at 3 p.m. Eastern Time. We're going to do a live stream, assuming FedEx shows up. <laughs> I've got a pretty cool uh, amateur radio transceiver come in. We're going to unbox it. We're going to set it up and uh, do a little modification to make it work for me. Even if you're not into the radio stuff, check it out. You know, you'll see a kind of a problem-solving technique I need to do for this modification we need to make. So anyway, this is uh, our project for today. It's going to be a station clock for my amateur radio station. And when I say amateur radio, you know, if you're from another country, you're not quite sure what I'm talking about. It's ham radio. I'm not, I'm not broadcasting music. It's just, you know, reaching out, talking to people all over the world. Now, here in the U.S., even though it's not a rule, you are encouraged to keep a station log of all your activities. That way, later on, if somebody accuses you of, say, you know, broadcast or broadcasting, transmitting out of band or something like that, and the FCC wants to have a little chat with you, well, you can whip out your station logs, and uh, that's going to go a long way to keeping you on the good side of things with the federal government. So this is going to be our station clock. It is going to uh, show the local time, the UTC time, uh, the temperature, and then uh, in the future, I'm thinking I'm going to add a button, or I might just use the touchscreen button. I'm not quite sure. And the reason for that is FCC rules require that amateur radio stations broadcast their call sign every 10 minutes. But, you know, you see, if you're talking to some guys, you might forget the time, so this is going to have a little reminder system in the future. Also, I'm going to 3D print a uh, nice little case for it right now. We're just going to stick it in a cardboard box when we're done. So what I've got here is just a little two and a, two and a half inch, I think, TFT LCD. These are real common. Uh, there'll be a link to it down below, and uh, you'll be able to get it in my Amazon store. Arduino Mega. Now, the reason I'm using the Mega instead of, say, just an Uno is the pins. You use this guy, whoops, and you really don't have any other pins to use. And we need at least two for this guy here. This is a DS3231 uh, real-time clock. It's an I squared C device, so we need to be able to hit our I squared C pins, which on the uh, Mega here are broken out real nice, 20 and 21. And that's a good thing because, like I said, this takes up just about every pin, but we do have a few extras down here, including a ground and an extra power. So that works out really nice. That's it for the hardware hookup. Uh, ground plus 5 volts, 20 and 21 for the I squared C, which I just popped loose. So let's go have a look at the code. There's really nothing to this code. It's, it's pretty simple. We have uh, four includes for everything we need, the clock. I squared C and two for the LCD. Then we're going to define what pins go where for the LCD. Change our hex color values into, you know, words so it's easier to use. Then we have our clock variables here. Create an instance of the clock. Then we create an instance of the LCD. Then we have our setup. Serial begin. I always put a serial begin in my programs. I mean, even if it's not required, that way it's easy to go back and uh, print out some variables to help debug. All right, then TFT reset, clock enable, TFT begin, wire begin. And we're going to wait a half second to make sure everything's up to speed. And we print a little header. It's redundant. I do it down here again. Here we are in the main loop of the program. And all we're doing is we're going to declare some variables that we need. We're going to set our rotation. You have four choices. I have it set with the USB connector on the right. Fill the screen black. 
set our cursor to the upper left, text color white, text size. And then we have the uh, title header, whatever you want to call it. Then we drop down, we print the local time, hours, minutes. Then we have this little line here to check and see if it's uh, less than 10. If it is, it adds a leading zero. Then we're going to print the time again, this time in the uh, Universal Coordinated Time, UTC. For me, it is uh, plus four hours. Depending on where you live, it will uh, probably change. Then we do the date. And finally, we do the temperature. And you'll notice here in this line, that I'm doing both uh, Celsius and Fahrenheit. You could do either. Heck, you could do none. You know, if you're working on this, this becomes your project and you get to do whatever you want with your project. Then down here at the bottom, we just print remember to ident every 10 minutes. You know, it's per FCC rules. Then we wait 30 seconds. Again, you can change that delay however you like, but, um, the refresh rate on that screen is a little bit slow, so unless you want to flicker in all the time, I'd keep it kind of long. Okay. Alrighty, we've got the code uploaded. Let's power it up and see what we get. Boom. So there you go. Let me zoom in on this here a little bit. Give you a better look. There's local time, UTC time, the date, and the temperature, and our little reminder down there at the bottom. And here comes the train, because whenever I start talking, a garbage train has to come by. So I guess I'll just wrap it up here. Say feel free to comment, share. Don't forget to subscribe. A big thanks to all my patrons. Big thanks to you. Hope I see you guys uh, for the live stream. Like I said, even though it's uh, amateur radio related, uh, check it out anyway. I will be answering any electronics related questions that you guys may have. All right. That's it. I'm out. Peace.